Good day. Today I'm going to demonstrate a free video stabilization software package called Gyroflow. Gyroflow is gyro-assisted video stabilization software developed by Elvin Chen, an aerospace engineering student, during his free time. Links to his Gyroflow site, YouTube channel, and Patreon, if you'd like to show your support, are all available in the video description below. Gyroflow can be used with any camera as long as you have a gyro log file source, which can be either internal to your camera, as with a GoPro or Insta360, or can also be external to your camera, such as with flash or SD card memory on your flight controller, or even an open log black box flight data recorder. Elvin has just come out with Gyroflow version 030 beta, and it has a lot of new features which make it much more user friendly than the alpha version. So the purpose of this video is to show you just how easy it is to use this free Gyroflow video stabilization software with its new user interface and features. We're going to download what you need to run the Gyroflow software and process a demo flight video using it, showing you the side-by-side -side before and after results. So if you're not using Gyroflow yet, by the end of this video, you should be, because it works and it's free. Go, go, Gyroflow! All right, we're going to start by downloading the things we need to run the Gyroflow software. To do that, we go to this site up here, elvinchen.com slash gyroflow. Go to the download page. And on this site, there are two things we need to download. One is the executable application itself, and the other one is the camera presets down here. First, we'll start with the Windows executable. I'm running Windows 10, so I'm going to get this one that works with Windows 8 and above. Here's a list of all the changes that Elvin's put on this new version, 030, compared with the alpha version. Let's download this. It's downloading over here. Once it's done, I'm going to cut and paste it into a folder, which I've already made on my hard drive called Gyroflow. I'm going to paste it here. And now we go back to the Gyroflow site and we download the camera presets. Downloading over here. And we're going to put that in the same location that we did the executable file. And we're going to unzip that. Then we're going to delete the zip file. And under these camera presets are a bunch of different calibration presets for different brands of cameras. Let's just open up the Cadex one as an example. And here you see all the different types of Cadex cameras that currently have calibration presets. Now these are just made by different individuals that have already calibrated their specific cameras. So the list of camera presets grows over time. You can check back on the website to get the latest version of camera presets. If you've got a camera that does not have a current camera preset available through these downloaded folders, then you'll have to calibrate your own camera and there's a process for doing that, which Elvin Chen goes over in his in-depth video tutorial on Gyroflow. And I've got a link to that in the video description below. Now that we've got the camera presets and the Gyroflow executable downloaded, there's only one other thing that we need, and that's an FFmpeg file. So let's go ahead and download that. To download the FFmpeg, we go to this site, which I'll also link to in the video description below. And let's take note of this. Unless you have a specific requirement, download one of the Git builds. Unlike many software, releases for the FFmpeg are primarily made for the convenience of OS distributors and package managers and don't signify greater stability or maturity. So we're going to download one of the Git builds. To do that, we go down here to Git version and this link, and we're going to download the full one here. And then I'm going to cut and paste that to the same location of my previous two downloads. I'm going to unzip it. I'm going to delete this. Then I'm going to open this folder and I'm going to get this ffmpeg.exe. And I'm going to cut it. And I'm going to move it to the same folder location as my camera presets and the Gyroflow. So now I've got the Gyroflow executable, the camera presets, and the ffmpeg.exe all in the same folder, which I've labeled Gyroflow. That's all we need to download to run our Gyroflow software. Let's go ahead and double click on this. This pops up. I'm not worried about it. So 
I'm going to click on more info and say run anyway. Then this window pops up for the first time. And after a few seconds, you'll see some things pop up here. And here's the launcher window that we'll be using. To run Gyroflow, we click on Video Stabilizer. And then this is the window that we'll be using for these different tabs. Input, Sync, Stabilization, and Export. We'll start with the Input tab. And I'm going to open a short flight video clip that I've previously captured for the purposes of this demonstration. For the flight video I've captured, I've used the Cadex Tarzir V2 camera on board one of my Rattler builds. Since the Tarzir camera doesn't have an internal gyro, I'll be using the gyro on my Rattler's flight controller to save a black box log file to flash memory. So before we start our Gyroflow video stabilization, I'll go through a quick refresher on how to use the black box log file. Make sure to check out this video for more information on how to set up your flight controller's black box capability. All right, now that we've captured our black box data file to our flight controller's onboard flash memory, all we have to do is connect our quad to Betaflight. Go to our black box tab. Activate mass storage device. And then go to our file directory for our onboard flash memory. Grab our latest black box file. Copy it and put it in the same folder that we have our flight video in, which just happens to be the same as the folder we've got our Gyroflow executable program in. Paste. Now when we use Gyroflow, we don't want our black box file to be a .bbl file, we want it to be a CSV file. So all we need to do is open up our black box explorer, open the log file, which is this betaflight 002.bbl, and the only thing we need to do with it in black box explorer is just export it as a CSV. And I'll keep this name for now and put it in that same folder. And we're done with Black Box Explorer. So now we go to the folder that we've just saved it to. And here you see we've got the .bbl.csv. Now what we want to do is give it the same name as our video file for Gyroflow. So I'm going to rename this loop0246. And now when we use it in Gyroflow, when we upload our video, it's automatically going to grab this loop0246.csv as our black box data file. So these are the two files we need with Gyroflow along with one of the camera presets that we're going to use. And we're ready to start Gyroflow. And we're going to open our video file, which is this loop0246. And you see, since we've named our CSV file loop0246, it automatically uploaded that for us, which is really nice. So the only thing we need to do now is grab the lens preset for the camera which we used, which was the Cadex Tarzir V2. I had it set on 2.7K 60fps 4.3 mode. So I'm going to browse the lens presets and go to Cadex. And the one I want is this one right here. I'm going to grab that. Now what Elvin has done is uh, similar to how Betaflight, if you hover your mouse over some of the options that you have in each of the fields, he's created some notes. FPV drones typically have the HD camera tilted from the flight controller. Positive equals upward. Now if you're not familiar with how to judge what your camera angle might be, I'll give you a quick tip. Just connect your quad to Betaflight. And here in the Setup tab, you've got your 3D model of your quad. And when you move your quad around, the model moves. So with your camera set at the angle you want during your flight, all you have to do is pitch your quad forward so that your camera angle is parallel to the ground. In my case, it's right at about 25 degrees. So that's what I'm going to put in that field in Gyroflow. So I'm going to go to the camera angle and I'm going to put 25 in here. And then we're going to go to Sync. Once again, you can hover your mouse over the different fields and there may be some notes that Elvin's put in there for you. This is how far off your video file starts from your gyro log file. In my case it was probably just a couple seconds so I'm going to put about two in here and this is the sync search size window. So if I start at two seconds it's going to go plus or minus ten seconds. And that should be plenty. From here, I'm going to keep everything else the same, and I'm just going to attempt auto sync. And then we open up this window, and we can watch what happens when it's running its auto sync. It's analyzing nine slices, and for each of the nine slices, it'll analyze the frame and give you some information down here. The estimated offset, 
and if it's calculated the better offset and what the cost is. This quote cost over here, the lower the number, the better, because we're going to curve fit to the points that it's analyzing. And when it's done, it'll tell you how many points it actually has used and how far off the points are from its estimation. You'll actually see a graphical representation of it. Sometimes if these numbers for cost are high, like above five or around 10 or something like that, it'll throw the point out. That's okay, as long as it's using enough points to do a curve fit to it. And now you get a bunch of graphs. Don't be overwhelmed by this stuff. This just gives you an idea of how well GyroFlow has estimated the movement of your camera along with the gyro motion itself. So you can see across here that the estimations are fairly good. Here's the different points it has used. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And how well the line fits these points. And over here in this other window, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you'll see each one of the points it's used as well as the offset and the error. Now, if you don't like it using one of the points based on these numbers or this graph, for instance, if I wanted to, I could throw this one out just by clicking on this X. I'm gonna keep them all for now, and we don't really need to do anything with those graphs. So from here, we just go to the Stabilization tab, and Elvin's given us a few different smoothing methods to choose from. The plain 3D smoothing, which is used for normal cinematic flight, you can also lock the horizon, which requires an accelerometer enabled. For normal type freestyle flight, he recommends this 3D smoothing with smooth angle limit. And for more snappy rolls and quick maneuvers, this 3D smoothing with sharp angle limit. And the difference between these two right now that I'm aware of is the default angle limit is 10 here and 15 here. Since I did a couple flips and a power loop, I believe, I'm going to go ahead and use this uh, 3D smoothing with smooth angle limit. And here you see that rotation limit in degrees is 10. I'm going to apply smoothness settings, and then I'm going to select export. And even though my camera setting was at a 4.3 mode, for action cameras, try exporting to 16.9 if recorded in 4.3. And that's because it stretches, GyroFlow stretches the field of view horizontally more than it does vertically. So I'm going to select a 16-9 aspect ratio, 1920 by 1080. And you can hover your mouse over these things and it'll explain what options you have for each of these options that it has notes for. However, since the purpose of this video is just to show you how easy it is to use GyroFlow, I'm just going to leave everything else at its default and export the stabilized video. I'm going to go to GyroFlow, and I'm just going to call this Loop 0246 Stabilized. And click Save. And then we can open up our command window and watch its progress. It's rendering. And what I do here normally, to, if I wanted to synchronize the video with the Blackbox data file in Blackbox Explorer, is I arm the quad in front of the FPV camera by flipping my switch. And that way I know exactly when I arm the quad and I can synchronize the video and the black box data file precisely. As previously demonstrated with GyroFlow, that's not really a necessity because you've got that sync search size window that you can play with along with the initial rough gyro offset in seconds. So we just go back up here and watch the progress of our rendering. All right, now that the rendering's finished, it should have saved the stabilized video in the same file folder as our original video. That's really all there is to using GyroFlow. We go to our file folder and we see that we have our original loop 0246 video and now we have our stabilized loop 0246 video in the same file folder as the original. So we'll wrap things up by showing you a side-by-side -side comparison of the before and after GyroFlow stabilized flight videos. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up below, share your thoughts in the comments section, and subscribe to your TMAC FPV channel. Enjoy the flight videos. Thanks for your time. We'll see you next video. Clear skies, friends.